And we are back. Despite a rocky start to the season, we're one game over 500. Uh, we do get to walk into this episode, we get to run into this episode, with uh, with a feeling of optimism, I would say, as we begin with the draft. Admittedly, this episode might only be the draft, otherwise, if not, we'll also go to the All-Star break. It's been, like I said, an interesting season so far. Uh, we have some real concerns, particularly in the bullpen with Jordan Hicks, Victor Arano, Liam Hendricks, and Sean Doolittle, for that matter all underperforming at the plate. Of course, DJ LeMayhew currently out to injury. Someone like Jake Marisnik currently struggling at the plate. Uh, yeah, but he's, he's good at fielding, so that's good, right? Maybe. Uh, we have some concerns, but for the moment, we can put them aside because it is draft time. So let's do this. Now, of course, we will have the compensation as well. We have the 30th pick. What do we have for compensation? Unless I'm misreading the uh, situation. We have the 26 pick. There, there we go. All right, so we have two extra picks between the second and third round. Not too bad. I'll take that. All things considered, I will take that. So we should be able to do some damage here. Hopefully, we didn't completely botch it uh, scouting-wise, and we can get some solid additions to the, uh, to the organization. So let's take a look here. As actually, you know, we'll, we'll go with uh, potential to start off. So, top guy listed here, Edgar Cortez, the starting pitcher who I'm not overly impressed with. Uh, the hits per nine, the K's per nine, kind of mediocre. Uh, the velocity and control high end looks good, but the 50s, I don't know. He might be worth it. What about Herschel Farrell? Good old Herschel is a little bit more well rounded, but again, some of the numbers. The 50 and the 45 on the hits and Ks per nine, a little bit low, but he is Canadian, so we'd never have to worry about him uh, not being happy and not being too close to home. Uh, so we will we'll keep an eye on both of those guys. Who else do we have here to start off? Reggie Upshaw, you're 22 and four years away. Get out of my face. Uh, Okada, though. Okada. Do we bring in the Rainmaker? Oh, let's see. Unfortunately... Uh, those attributes are looking rough. Stamina's looking good. Break is tremendous. Home runs are solid. Everything else, though, not as good. Not as good. So uh, maybe if he maybe if he falls, we'll uh, we'll look at picking him up. But for the moment, uh, that's not going to happen. McClellan is 22. He's going to be ready next year, apparently, as a starter. Uh, Stamina's great. He's not bad. He's not bad, actually. The control's a little bit low, as are the Ks, but he might be a half-decent option here. Sean Bloom's a bit too far out. So McClellan, or one of the top two, look ideal at this point. Uh, what about Mario Dominguez, the first baseman? Uh, contact and power, yeah, that's just high injury risk as well. That's that's just a whole lot of mediocre. Uh, Sorvala's four-plus years away at 22. That's not going to happen. Ryan Dahl. He's 18. He's three years away. And hello, contact. No secondary positions. Good contact. Decent power. Fielding is okay. Uh, not great. Good speed, though, too. He would be the, the perfect second-round pick. I just don't know if he'll fall that far. I'd love to be able to get this guy in the second round. But so far... He's looking like more of you know, one of the more complete players. Good contact, good speed. Fielding and arm strength's a bit low, but he's looking pretty damn good. Uh, what about Julio Parra? Contact and power is okay. Good fielding, good arm strength, good speed. Oh, man, this might be a half-decent draft for outfielders. Julio Parra would also work. I like Dahl more than I like Parra, uh, but both are looking okay. Tony Thomas, you're four years away at 21. We'll probably just avoid you. Uh, I mean, the contact's okay, but being that far off, that just tells me low overall, more than likely. I mean, the fielding and the speed is tremendous, though. Uh, if he slips, we'll look to uh, draft him later on. Nino Camacho. Yeah, that's, that's not going to happen. Definitely a defense first, second baseman, uh, but uh, compared to some other options, I'd say no. Andy Wales. Andy Wales. Solid at the plate, 
pretty well-rounded, actually. Also not a bad option. Hmm. What about Valenzuela? He is actually not that bad either. Uh, hits, Ks, and walks are a little bit low. He would be a great second to third round pick if we could get him there. What about Valdez? He's 21. He's three years away. Uh, Valdez, not as great. Good stamina. That was about it. What about Escobar? Just to try and get a look here at some top-notch players. Escobar, not first round pick worthy, but could be worth selecting later on. Estrada, same thing. Not terrible, but not great. Snowden. Snowden. I mean, as a closer, the hits are okay. K is... You know, he's not looking too bad, actually. Again, someone else in that second to third round range. I really haven't seen the one guy where I'm like, yes, absolutely, he's a first round pick. Uh, that's that's a safe bet, at least. That one outfielder is looking all right. Um, this pitcher here, Montano, is actually not that bad either. There's quite a few guys that's like, yeah, second to third round pick, perfect. Uh, but taking them in the first round, I'm a little bit concerned. Alfonso's nothing special. Ruben Betts is nothing special. Uh, Asensio? Ooh, Asensio. Looking pretty good. Wow, Asensio's actually looking really good. Uh, the hitting is solid, especially the power against lefties. At least in terms of potential. Asensio would be a pretty good pickup later on. What about Michael Michel? The Dominican, he's all right. Sensio, though. Henry Palmero. I mean, he's a Palmero and he has power. High injury risk, but of course we're in the AL, so DH is a factor. Could also be a half decent pickup with that power. That could be a strong DH option moving forward. We still have so many guys to look at here, though, too. Evan Mims, looking pretty good actually as a reliever. Here's my concern. It's just. How many of these guys are going to hang around? Like, I'm not afraid to take someone who has 65 listed potential. Not at all. It depends on what the attributes are for me. Uh, Chris Thomason. Also looking all right. The walks are a little bit low. Man, we ended up scouting a lot of people. Silva. Silva's actually looking pretty good, too, as a reliever. I just don't think I want to take a reliever in the first round. Garcia. Eh. What else do we have? Kenny Goots out of Ohio. Looking all right, but nothing too crazy. Tim Farley. All right, I think we we pretty much have a good idea of who we're looking for here. At least in my opinion. What about Kimura? Uh, very versatile. Can play all three outfield spots. Left field twice over. Uh, and first base, but nothing overly special. And that's still not it. My God, Lou Hurley. Just kind of okay. Reed Cruz. Just kind of okay. Roger Woodall. Good fielding and speed, but nothing too good at the plate. Peter Takatsu. Peter Takatsu. If it wasn't for the walks being as low as they are, he'd be a hell of a reliever to take early on. He's another one where if he falls in the draft, we'll look at it. David Naquin. Also not that bad. We're going to end up with some decent players here. It's just a matter of whether or not we take the right players at the right time. Uh, Greataville. Also looking okay. Like I said, I'd like to get you guys a full look at the players I'm considering drafting because, hey, you know, before I make the pick, you can be like, hey, you should have taken that guy. And hey, you might be right, you might be wrong. We'll see. All right, that's all the info that we have. Ah, so Farrell, Cortez were up there. There was Upshaw, Snowden. We don't have any closers or uh, any catchers scouted. Clo or catchers, we have Dalewski. There's only one closer left. Dominguez was just kind of okay. Palmero has that decent power. I don't know if we want to potentially select, you know, a DH at this stage. Andy Wales is also pretty good, pretty well-rounded. Asensio, though, with the fielding, the reaction time, the batting ability, he is one of my favorites right now. Don't have anybody at shortstop. Let's see, there's Thomas, there's Betts, there was Para. I'd say for me it comes down to Roger Dahl or Senzio. I think it's got to be Roger Dahl, just looking at the, the batting ability, the speed. I think, or uh, not Roger Dahl, Ryan Dahl. I was looking at Roger Woodall, so 
I think Ryan Dahl might be the guy here. Because there's quite a few starting pitchers, and there's not one that really jumped off the page for me to get. Same thing for relief pitchers. I think I'd rather go for Ryan Dahl, who looks like, I mean, him or Ruben Betts. Actually, no, it wasn't Betts. It was Para. That ended up looking pretty good. Actually, for that for that reason, it might might be worth not. Dahl's too good. Dahl's the guy. Dahl's the guy. He has the best attributes. I'm going to go for him. Ryan Dahl is my pick at the end of the first round. Will that end up being the right decision? Time will tell. Uh, pretty much everybody else I was looking at is off the board. Uh, Naquin's gone. Okada's gone. Dominguez is gone. Betts is off the board. Asensio is off the board. Upshaw, that reliever. Uh, Palmero, I thought he went to Baltimore, but he went to the Giants. So it'll be interesting to see who's left to uh, to look at here. But I'm all right with that doll pick. We'll see if it ended up being the right choice. So taking a look now, Roger Woodall, decent as a fielding first outfielder. We still have Para, who is well-rounded with good speed and good fielding. So right now, Julio Para is my go-to for this next pick. Manuel Valido. Manny Valido is such a common name in this game. I don't know why. Uh, Nino Camacho. Again, not bad for a fielding first, second baseman. And that's pretty much it. <laughs> so, just because of our strength of starting pitching, I'd like to end up with one of these four. It's a tough call, though. Camacho's not terrible. I think I'd like to end up with Para. Camacho, and then I'm going to start focusing on starting pitching. I'm going to take Para here, though. I like him. I didn't think we'd go all out uh, outfield to start, uh, but he's on the board. Now we have our two compensation picks as well, so that's that's pretty solid. So we end up with two hopefully solid outfielders. I am actually going to take a risk and take Nino Camacho early. He's definitely a, a fielding first, second baseman, but he's basically the last position player that we're going to take in this draft and that we actually have information on so let's take nino camacho and again these are the picks i believe from brad hand i don't know if we would have gotten compensation on sale to be honest we should have i think uh, so let's take a look we have quite a few starters left i'm gonna go for a relief pitcher here so snowden is looking pretty damn good to be honest especially for a closer uh, let's see, Morales also looking okay. The 50s for walks, a little bit concerning. And Michelle as well, clearly the worst of the three. So you're 20 and four plus years away, Snowden. Yeah, Bill Snowden is the guy. Four pitches as a closer out of the Dominican, surprisingly. But Bill Snowden is going to be that next pick. And we'll move on to the third round. So I'm intrigued to see how this goes. Roger Woodall was just taken as well. Who is left? All right, so we don't have any other relievers that we have info on. So it was definitely the right call to take him. And we're going to end up with one of these two starters based on age and ETA. Uh, both would be decent. Let's take a look at the stats here. So a couple of 65s, but everything else over a 70. Really good stamina for Will McClellan. Yeah, Will McClellan's the pick. <laughs> that's That's fairly obvious. So we'll go for Will McClellan. With this selection, that brings us to the fourth round, and from this point on, it's just best guess. Unfortunately, again, I can't take a look uh, from that spot. There we go, drafted. So we end up with Dahl, Para, Camacho, Snowden, and McClellan. I'm feeling all right about this draft class so far. Say what you want about those potentials, but I care more about the attributes. We don't have info on anybody else. So we're basically just drafting off of name value. Or the fact that we might be listed as weak in that uh, position. So, pretty much all I can do is look at the ETA. And again, unfortunately, ETA will change uh, as you further scout somebody. So, let's see. We only have... These are the uh, the top six here for 2022 ETA. We have a starting pitcher, two starting pitchers, three starting pitchers, a relief pitcher. I'm going to take the catcher. I mean, because why not? It just kind of makes sense. The 19-year-old Tom Hudson uh, at least has average injury risk. Again, any of those attributes listed there you can't trust. We'll just see how good he is. We're taking him for the sole reason that he is a catcher. So uh, we'll see who's available. It's unfortunate that we're kind of at best guess right now, but it's all we can really do. And there's still three players left with that quick ETA. 
Doesn't necessarily mean anything, of course, but we can see what happens. So you have Robert West, at least average uh, injury risk. Only three pitchers the, or pitches for a starting pitcher. Suzuki has four average, and then Robinson. Holy Robinson Rupert. Third, short, and the outfield. I think for that reason alone, we're going to take Robinson uh, Rupert just for how versatile he is. That, Yeah, I was going to go for the reliever, uh, but we'll take Rupert. And we have one final pick here, the last pick in the draft. They're all 2025 ETAs now. Let's take a look at age. So we have Scotty Rodriguez, Corey Roel. Let's see, a low injury risk there. Pitcher out of Louisiana. Uh, let's see, Cordova's out of Jamaica. Kind of looking maybe if there's a Canadian, that would be worth the risk. Um, okay, that's it, huh? That is it. So we have the 19-year-old with the same ETA. I guess we're going to go for Scotty Rodriguez, and we'll see uh, We'll see how this went for us. Overall, I'm feeling all right about it, but that could change in an instant. Let's find out, and... You know, only two B potential players, but I certainly made the right choice with Ryan Dahl. 18 years old, 71 overall with 82 potential. That is tremendous. The durability is a little bit low at a 51, uh, but a solid option. Fast, already a steel threat, good at the plate. Fielding's a concern. I'm happy with that Ryan Dahl selection. Uh, Para didn't quite work out. C potential, and he's fast, so he could be a future pinch running option for us. Might not be a bad guy for the future. He can't bunt, though, either, which is unfortunate for that speed. Uh, he'll be worth signing, at least. We are going to sign Ryan Dahl as well. I'm going to give him a little bit of money. Uh, and we'll also sign Para. He's at least worth bringing in. The other B potential guy, shockingly, to me at least, was Nino Camacho. Again, fielding first, second baseman, but 20 years old, a 67 overall, which is solid. I'm good with that, man. Durability through the roof. He can't hit to save his life. But for a defensive option, Nino Camacho. Not too bad. We then get to the closer, Bill Snowden, which... Admittedly, I'm disappointed because he's one potential point away from B potential. He ends up being 73 overall at 22 years old, C potential, but he is a 73. So we could see him in the bullpen, I mean, hell, as soon as next season. Uh, so at the very least, the top four guys were worth signing. I don't know if you can hear it. It sounds like this PS4 is about to explode. So if it does, hey, it was nice knowing you all. Uh, Will McClellan, unfortunately, just just missed out on C potential. He would have been worth signing had he made it. We are going to let him go. Uh, Hudson, of course, we took a risk on. If he was C potential, he'd be pretty damn good. 67 overall, 19 years old. It's not going to work, though. Uh, Robinson Rupert, of course, was another best guess pick. Not really worth signing at D potential. And Scotty Rodriguez, I mean, he's a 44 C potential. Probably, I mean, he's 19, so he's worth signing for that reason, just because he's younger. We'll probably never develop. Uh, so we end up signing five out of eight, which isn't that bad, especially considering we were picking at the end of every round, with the exception of the compensation rounds. Uh, but yeah, damn. So let's take a look here. Uh, Dominguez ended up being terrible at, uh, actually. I'm just going to scroll through each team, let you guys see the potentials. Um, if there's anybody that you kind of want to know the information on, just let me know. Uh, but I don't want to spend too much time uh, sitting here looking at every team and every player. I am mainly just looking through the player names right now as opposed to any potentials. I know that there was a 94 back here. Um, I'm mainly just trying to look out for guys that I was considering drafting. Uh, that way I can take a look at them to see what we missed out on. Uh, including Dan Dunlap, who's pretty low overall for a 21-year-old. Uh, Senzio, D potential. Kind of glad we missed out on that. Um, but yeah, let me know what you think. As far as how we did draft-wise, I feel like we did okay, all things considered. Uh, but like I said, I'm not really taking a look at every team in depth. Uh, so there is that chance that uh, some other teams, which, you know, granted, if there's a, a lower potential, actually ended up being pretty damn good. Um, or, you know, it's like even Sorvali. He's 22, but you might not have seen the overall had I not scrolled down. Kind of tough to tell uh, who ended up being, you know, a tremendous player without taking a look at everything in depth. But just for the sake of time, because it can be uh, 
quite time consuming to have to sit here and go to every team and be like, okay, this guy's good, this guy's bad. Andy Wales, though, was actually kind of good and someone we were considering. Uh, Upshaw's another guy we were considering. You know, I will say, though, based off of the names I've seen so far, uh, considering some of the players we missed out on, Okada actually would have been pretty good. He would have been really good. 56 overall at 19 years old. Damn. Damn, we should have gone with him over the uh, over the other outfielder. So at the very least, that is uh, that is one missed opportunity on my part. Uh, but I think you guys get the point as far as uh, as far as what we were talking about here. Tony Thomas, not bad for a C potential guy. Fast as hell. Roger Woodall, kind of glad we missed out on him. Evan Mims, Farrell actually would have been pretty good too. So there's a couple of starting pitchers that we missed out on. Uh, Palmero, 66 power and 61 D potential. Yikes. Ended up being uh, pretty bad. I think that's putting it nicely. Pretty bad. And that will uh, that'll pretty much do it for this draft. There we go. So overall, happy with who we ended up with, but certainly no major game changers for this point in the season. Now, we're about a month and a half out from the All-Star break. And I think we will move forward as in AAA, Alex Julio tears his Achilles and is out for over six months. That is unfortunate. Uh, Injury-wise, uh, we haven't uh, had the best of luck, unfortunately. Uh, we'll see. We'll see if that can kind of turn around here. As hopefully we can start winning some games. Yeah, Julio is going to be move him to the 60-day DL game. Come on now, he's done for the season. Uh, we actually did pretty well in that stretch there, uh, winning all three series, only losing two games. Not too bad. Three-game series against Houston. They are really struggling. I think that's probably more surprising than our record. Uh, we'll keep Tyon active. And as a party in double-A, breaks his shin. Good Lord, the amount of injuries right now. We beat Houston in that series, though. We're up to 40 and 34. Uh, point being here is we sim towards the all-star break. Hopefully, uh, we can continue to win games, and hopefully, as we lose our first series of the month, uh, hopefully individual stats continue to rise. As we get an offer for Giovanni Chavez, which, <laughs> I mean, this guy better be like a 95 overall. Uh, 21A and a 7, uh, no, no, I'm not, no. I mean, come on, my guy's better, I get it. It's like, oh, do you want to trade a shortstop for a... A pitcher of similar caliber? No, I really don't. As we lose back-to-back -back series against Baltimore and against Miami. So now 42 and 38 on the season. We'll sim these three games against Tampa. Although, although, DJ LeMayhew is back. So we'll try to stop the sim. And we did so successfully. LeMayhew, welcome back. Urena, though, has been great. Oh, my God, he's been so good. Let's see. 281 average, 383 on base. Oh, my God. I don't know if we can take him out. But Duffy's doing really well. Uh, Bichette's on a bit of a cold streak right now, but he's done really well. Hoskins is still struggling a bit. I have to take out Irena for the moment, and it really sucks because he's been really good. Uh, but we'll see. We'll move Marisnik down. Actually, here, let's alter the lineup a little bit. I was going to save those changes for uh, for another time. I think we'll still have LeMayhew in the fifth spot. LeMayhew in the five spot's pretty solid. Again, I'm still worried about Hoskins. Uh, let's see. So we'll have Duffy ahead of Bichette. All right, so that works. That works. So again, LeMayhew, Duffy, Bichette, Mia, Marisnik. As we'll move in LeMayhew... Uh, Duffy actually takes a seat, which is unfortunate. Um, of course, that was just at the start of the year, thinking he wasn't going to be that good, and it's turned out he's actually been pretty good. So we definitely might have to look at changing the lineup as we get closer to the deadline. And then let's see here. Urena out again. Don't know if you can hear that motorcycle in the background, but I'm so glad people just decided to sit in the parking lot and rev engines. It, I mean, that's not overcompensating for anything. Not at all. Not at all. Anyway, <laughs> let's move on. Uh, next two games here against Tampa. Now that LeMay Hughes back in the lineup. And we have too many players. Shit, I forgot to send somebody down. Uh, who are we going to send down? MLB roster. It'd be Art Matheny uh, going back down to AAA. 
So that's quick and easy. Next two games against Tampa. We took game one. We end up winning the series, two to three. All right. 44 and 39. We have a three game series against Washington. We split the first two games and we lose that series as well. So we're continuing that trend of being a streaky team. We started off this month on a hot note and then just kind of dropped off a bit. Uh, where are we in terms of the standings right now? We're 11 games back of the Yankees. Absolutely brutal. Where are we in the wild card? All right, so right now we're tied for the wild card with, uh, with Cleveland and Baltimore. Wild card race is still incredibly close, but we are... We are very far back. 57 wins for the Yankees this season. That is going to be tough to overcome. We have a three-game series of Boston against Anderson Price and Sammy Guillen. Let's see how we do as the Red Sox make a trade. Gregory Polanco to Boston for Jay Groom, Evan Castillo, and Derek Curry. Damn. Gregory Polanco to Boston. Right, we take game one, we lose game two, the Marlins are up. No, I'm not giving up Alberto, so you're insane. Can we please win this third game against Boston? No, we cannot. It's another series loss. 46 and 43, and this is a huge series for us against the Yankees. If we lose this, we're in a bad way, and we already lost it. We lost the first two. We're in a little bit of trouble here. Just don't get swept, please. A triple-A All-Star game. I don't really care, admittedly, at the moment. And we get swept by the Yankees, and we're back to 500. Damn. Four games against Kansas City. We'll, uh, we'll go ahead and sim through that. We win the first two. Yeah, stop offering me trades. No thank you. Uh, we, take, we take the series, winning three, and we sweep Kansas City over four games. Uh, home run derby will skip because we don't have a participant. Uh, let's go ahead and sim, though. Let's sit, take a look here at who made the All-Star game for us. And from there, we'll take a look at our lineup and think about what we have to do moving forward. I'm mainly concerned about that above anything else right now. As Kershaw is going to be the starter. Do we have anybody on a pitching staff? Probably not. Brad Hand ends up making it. That's... Uh, that's heartbreaking. So we don't have a pitching representative. Junior makes it, which is solid. Funny enough, Josh Donaldson makes it in Baltimore. <laughs> Damn. Uh, Machado, Lindor, and I think that's it. One representative, and it's Vlad Jr. That just kind of goes to show how uh, how much we have underperformed. Let's take a look at the rotation. Denilson Lamette's up to a 90 overall, 9-5 and five record, but a 2.83 ERA. That is tremendous to uh, kind of uh, let you guys in on what numbers are great. Again, above a 300 average for this season would obviously be tremendous. And Junior's up there at a 306, even though he's on a bit of a cold stretch right now. Uh, home run-wise, Manny Machado's up there. I mainly want to take a look. Uh, let's see, actually, on uh, on base percentage... So, I mean, anything really, I mean, obviously, if you're in the 400s, you're playing out of your goddamn skull, and Junior's almost there. Uh, so that just kind of gives you a look at how everyone's doing, at least in the AL. Uh, Eflin actually leads, or is tied for the AL lead and wins, which is pretty crazy. Uh, saves leader right now, Addison Reed's down at 20. ERA, so just to give you a look at what's solid, Jordan Montgomery's leading the way with a good amount of separation, but if you have under a 3... Uh, you are in the uh, the top nine for the season. So, Lamette's having a fantastic season. No doubt about that. Uh, but that gives you kind of a look at uh, what the rest of the team's going to be looking like once we take a look here. And then for Whip, uh, which, again, is walks and hits uh, per inning. Uh, kind of a, uh, one of the main metrics for relief, uh, for relief pitchers, of course. You know, the war is also a factor as well. Wins above replacement and such. Uh, but taking a look here, yeah, closer to a closer to a 1.0 you can be, the better, right? So we'll take a look at our team now that we kind of seen how everyone else is doing. So again, Danilson Lamette, great season so far. Jamison Taya, not so much for someone who was supposed to be our ace. He hasn't been terrible. He's actually been better this season than he was last year. Um, and again, he's not happy about not being the ace, so he's technically down two points and factor in that the team's kind of struggling a bit. 
He's not performing at a high level. And that's the drop in overall by those two points there. He's been okay. He's been okay. He's been arguably good. I'd say Zach Eflin's been pretty good. If Lamette's been great with nose numbers, Eflin's been good. I mean, if not closer to great, again, a 12-3 and record. The ERA is pretty solid. Um, he's been he's been good for us. So, lamette has been fantastic. Eflin's been great. tyen has been good. Uh, is that good enough, though, for a 90 overall pitcher? That's the debate. Uh, Liriano also has been pretty good. I mean, really, our starters don't appear to be too much of an issue outside of Eric Geronimo, who, again, we traded Alex Wood for. He has struggled. He has struggled. He's a 79. He expects to be depth, actually. So you could argue we could go out and get somebody else. Maybe give him a, one more season, one more bit of seasoning. A little bit more seasoning. One half season more of seasoning is what I'm trying to say. Uh, down in AAA. We could do that. Because I don't know if I'd want him to be the long reliever. Although that's also an option. So what do you guys think? Uh, what should we do with Eric Geronimo? Lester Martin has been okay as the long reliever let's go with okay um i think ideally especially if we're gonna say hey let's go for the playoffs we trade uh, for another starter and probably move geronimo either to the bullpen as the long reliever or just down to triple a in general martin could also be sent down so i think ideally geronimo or martin would be the long reliever probably martin and we find a new starter uh, for this rotation as far as the rest of the bullpen goes, Michael Givens has been okay. Again, a 119 whip is pretty solid, actually. Again, closer to the 1.0, you can be the better. Uh, Jordan Hicks has not been great. Victor Arano really hasn't been that good. Hendricks, same thing. Doolittle's kind of gotten the numbers down. And then you have Addison Reed. So, in fairness, the bullpen has started to get it together a little bit. I don't know if we want to give up on Jordan Hicks. We can't send him to the minors without putting him on waivers. So if we decide he's got to go, then he's just outright got to go and will be traded. Um, so, yeah, we do have we do have some concerns. And I imagine for him the big issue is the fact that the walk rating is quite low. And he's probably giving up more walks than hits. But that's still a factor here. ERA is still uh, somewhat high as well, but of course, 43 innings pitched. So uh, we, we do still have some concerns about our pitching uh, in both regards. And then lineup-wise, Herrera, 15 home runs, only 39 RBIs. Uh, but again, he's a leadoff, so I can forgive that. Eight stolen bases, uh, 283 average on base percentage above a, three, uh, a .35, which is pretty good. I'm happy with that. There might be a better option to have as our leadoff guy. Uh, Ender and Ciarte, 12 home runs, 49 RBIs, and a 291 average. So, batting average and uh, on base percentage, definitely where I like to see it from him. It'd be nice if the RBI total would be up a little bit, but you could argue hitting in the two spot might not uh, might not get as much as a result. Vlad Jr. is having an amazing season. An amazing season. 17 home runs, 61 RBIs. He hit 92 last year. Uh, and again, a 306 average with a 399 on base, 539 slugging. He is living up to the hype so far. Whereas Reese Hoskins, struggling a bit. We're also looking at some regression for Reese Hoskins as well. We might have a problem here long term. Uh, last season hit 42 home runs. The year before that was 29. Nine home runs this year, 34 RBIs. There is a problem. 290 average last year. The on-base percentage is still okay. Slugging percentage is in the toilets. We have a real decision to make here with Reese Hoskins. We have a big-time decision to make here with Reese Hoskins. We'll take a look at the rest of the lineup. Uh, but right now, again, uh, bullpen-wise, we could look at making certain changes. Maybe bringing in a reliever, but of course we'd have to trade somebody out to do so. Still should probably look at a starting pitcher. Do we move on from Reese Hoskins, or do we just have faith in him that he'll be able to break out of the slump? My issue is the fact that he has regressed. He's playing at a poor level, and he's underpaid. I'm a little bit concerned about that. Uh, DJ LeMayhew, of course, has been injured for a decent amount of the season. Uh, we are starting to see some regression from him as well, which is also quite concerning. 
but so far this season, a 310 average and a 357 on base. So this might be our last season with LeMayhew because of that regression. It's nothing too crazy, but it is something to start to be a little bit concerned about. He's still a solid player, obviously. Same thing with Hoskins. The regression's there, but he is still a solid player. So how reactionary do we want to be? Uh, Matt Duffy is a good example of us kind of being inconsistent in terms of being reactionary because last year uh, he was terrible in the playoffs, but regular season he's continuing to do well. He's already hit more home runs this year and will by far have more RBIs. He's having a really good season, actually. Uh, as is Bo Bichette with the 43 RBIs. You can see the progression across the board pretty much. Uh, contact, uh, hitting against lefties has dropped off, but still... Uh, nine home runs, 43 RBIs, 252 average, so a little bit off of last year's pace, but still doing relatively well. Uh, Mieja, of course, is off to a terrible start outside of the regression to his uh, stealing and base running and the contact the lefties. We're seeing some improvements. Um, you know, still a very strong option that we have on the team. And then, thankfully, Marisnik has improved, uh, mainly, mainly improving in terms of attributes, but that batting average and on-base percentage is still low, but it's gotten better. So in terms of concerns here, Hoskins is up there. LeMayhew moving forward in the next couple of seasons. Marisnik as well, just not having that strong of a year. Uh, his on-base percentage wasn't extremely high last year. We brought him in for the fielding, but I'd still like to see him do a little bit better uh, we do still have DeShields, who of course is pissed about not being an everyday player. We're pretty much using him exclusively as a base running threat. Uh, he hasn't been that great when he's gotten opportunities this season anyway. Uh, and Urena has been tremendous uh, so far this season. I mean, 170 at bats, 271 average, 372 on base percentage. Uh, and Arias has also been pretty good. So we have options if we want to look to make some major moves, which you could argue uh, that we should be looking to make some major moves because we're 13 games back of the division-leading Yankees right now. Uh, we are very much in the wild card race, but there's obviously some tough competition there. The Indians, the Red Sox, it's not going to be an easy race. So we are going to call it quits for the moment. And just to kind of show you guys options that we have elsewhere, uh, mainly in AAA, I just, mm, I, I just, damn it, just damn it. Don't know if you heard that car engine rev up. I, living where I do, people have a fascination with just stupidly loud engines and exhaust. Um, I don't know why. I don't know why. But it, no, I'm the only person in the state of Maine who apparently gets annoyed by it. So that's cool. Maybe it's because it's, I do what I do. Uh, regardless, Henry, Mar uh, Henry Mario could be called up. He could be. He's having a fantastic season uh, down in AAA. So he could be the call-up option. Uh, Salas as well. Maybe not the ideal relief pitcher, but he's having a great season in AAA as well. Uh, as is Jerome German. Granted, he's the closer and hasn't seen a ton of action. But he's been pretty damn good in the time he has seen. So I just wanted to show you guys some of the uh, call-up options that we have um, in case we wanted to go that way. But I'll leave it up to you guys. I'll take a look at this again, of course, moving forward, based on your feedback, if there is any, of course. Hey, if there isn't, cool, whatever. I'm going to continue on because I'm enjoying the series. Uh, we'll make the changes that we have to make uh, to hopefully keep this team in a competitive spot. Or, again, we could take a step back for a season or two and gear up for year three. But, I mean... We won a goddamn World Series. Our GM rating's still through the roof. We should be fine, regardless. But that'll do it for this one. You know the deal. Support the video. Support the channel. Thank you very much. Goodbye for now.